everybody. So um, I think we're going to get started. So uh, first I'll introduce myself. So my name is Katie Nikitakis and I work in the admissions office here at Thornton Academy. Um, I've been at Thornton Academy since 2002, so it's been a really long time. Um, and it's just a school that I'm super um, proud to be a part of um, because of what we offer to our students. So uh, we're really thrilled that you all could join us for our virtual open house. Um, it's December 2nd, um, and this virtual open house is featuring our residential life department. So you're gonna get a chance to hear from um, Catherine Parity, um, our director of residential life, uh, two students who have been part of our residential life program for two years and three years now, respectively, and then also our director of enrollment, um, Mr. Clint Williams. Uh, so just a few things about the the webinar here in case you no one in case you haven't done a zoom webinar before which probably you have but uh, down at the bottom of your screen you have a bar um, you've got a few different options on that bar um, there's a chat so you can feel free to type in the chat um, at the end of this presentation we are going to do a question and answer period uh, and so if you have a question I know some of you guys have um, already submitted questions and we have those uh, but if you uh, have a question that you would like to ask, please type it into the Q&A box um, and we'll be able to get to it um, at the end of the presentation after everyone has spoken. So um, with that, I think we're going to get started here. Um, and I will just start by saying uh, that at Thornton Academy, we really believe that you can be who you are um, and become who you want to be. And that is the key thing that 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 we really want is you're going to see um, throughout our presentation that we offer a really wide, broad range of classes, extracurriculars, activities. Our residential life program in, includes students from all over the world, many different countries. And so this idea of finding yourself um, and then finding out what you want to do in the future and helping and letting Thornton Academy help you on your path to the future um, is going to be really important. And there is one more thing that I wanted to mention, um, and that is that obviously this year, 2020, is a very special um, year in the history of the world. Um, and while we are very proud of uh, the work that um, Mrs. Parity and the rest of the residential life staff are doing and the rest of the entire Thornton Academy staff um, to keep our students safe, uh, this presentation will really focus on um, what we're going to be offering next year in 21-22, assuming that, you know, the world is sort of back to normal, which who knows, hopefully we're, that's where we're going to be um, in a little bit. So if you do have specific questions about this year, um, again, feel free to type those into the Q&A and we'll get to those um, during the question and answer period. So again, thank you for being here and let's get started. So. First, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Clint Williams. I'm going to ask him to uh, unmute himself um, and, uh, and, and kick us off. Introduce yourself a little bit, Clint. Okay. I, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. And, uh, and apologies for a little bit of technical issues, but am I centered in the picture? Can people see me okay? I don't think we can see you at all. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. But that's let okay. Me, me, that's all right. <laughs> let me try let me, let me try again here. How about okay. that? Uh no, still still black. But that's okay. That's all we right. can hear you and that's really what matters, okay. I think. All right, great. Yeah. Everybody, again, thank you, Katie. Apologies again. Um I'm happy to be here. These these virtual open houses that we have are are instrumental in our ability to connect with folks around the world and I think I think it's pretty awesome that we have such representation and I appreciate people sticking on and, and learning about Thornton Academy so uh, off we go so some quick facts about TA you know we, we absolutely are a very diverse school population one thing that that I always love saying that Maine is the number one most peaceful, safest state in all of the US. And that doesn't mean safest with COVID, it means safest with crime and, and with, with all of the things associated with being safe. So I think that's a, that's a pretty awesome statistic. Um, we, have, we have this year over 30, 31, 32 different countries represented in our student body. 
simple things like our course offerings, over 200, 26 AP level classes, which is an amazing amount of opportunity for kids seeking to go to a quality college or university here in the US. Uh, excellent, excellent faculty. Again, 72% faculty with advanced degrees. Um, long history, founded in 1811. And again, this, rep, th this total school body of, of boys and girls representing 1,600 students is an, uh, again, an excellent opportunity for you to connect with folks that have uh, similar abilities, similar interests, again, in a wide variety of different offerings. So pretty amazing, pretty, pretty amazing place to come and study. And where is Thornton Academy? And, and most of you may have gone online and, and taken a look already, but we're located in the Northeastern state of Maine. And again, uh, being the number one safest state in the US, we're located right near Portland, Maine, which is a port city, a very beautiful city on the coast of Maine. Maine is known as vacation land. Again, the environment is, is an outstanding place, uh, very um, beautiful, where uh, Thornton Academy is right next to the Atlantic Ocean, literally about two, two and a half miles away, and only about 15 minutes from the port city of Portland, Maine, and 90 minutes from the very historical city of Boston, Massachusetts, where, where frankly many very, very good colleges and universities are located, which by we have excellent connections with. Our campus is, is set up very much like a small community college, if you will. Um, it, looks, it looks large, but when you're here on campus and you're, and you're walking through the hallways or going between different buildings, uh, which include a, a new state-of-the-art arts and new media center uh, that has television studio, that we also have a 500-seat theater, an engineering lab. We have, as you can see in the, in the upper right corner, a, a fantastic athletic turf stadium. I mean, the, the facilities here are fantastic. They are open, available to our student body to access. And again, it looks big, but, but actually when you navigate through to the different locations, it feels much nicer, much more, uh, I guess, intimate, if you will. And again, uh, they're, they're fantastic facilities. And, and I'll let Kathy speak to the dormitories um, when, she, when she's on. Miss Parody, excuse me. Um, the pillars, we have four pillars. And, and just briefly, we, we basically go throughout our year with these in the back of our mind. I won't read them all, but it's respect, responsibility, investment, and compassion. And I'll let you go back to those. But, but those are very important words and, and very important pillars, if you will, that, that we operate our year with those in the back of our mind. Again, the academic program is unbelievable. And I will challenge any boarding school in New England to have the amount of comprehensiveness in our academic program as we do here at Thornton Academy. Um, I mentioned a couple of statistics. I did not mention the fact that we have seven different foreign languages, 40 different honors courses that combine along with our 26 AP level classes. And you can see in the pictures the facility whereby our teachers are providing that instruction for the classes that are below the pictures. And I won't read through them all, but you can see that, that some of them are, are quite interesting. Creative writing, for example, movie making, web design, um, you know, it, it's just robotics, for example. I mean, just an awesome opportunity to try some different class offerings that, that many schools uh, do not have. I certainly won't forget Thornton Academy Middle School. 
And the, the nickname for that, if you will, is TAMS, T-A-M-S, Thornton Academy Middle School. It's a private middle school, grades six through eight, and also um, tops in regard to how our teachers provide academic instruction in a very, very high quality classroom situation and class uh, academic um, buildings. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're all on, we're all involved in being connected with uh, Thornton Academy's Apple Distinguished School Awards. So, you know, just a testament to the technology that we have, but not, not only do we have it, we know how to access it and, and utilize it in, in, in a dynamic way. But TAMS is, is 100% uh, private. And um, again, it's grades six through eight for boys and girls. One of the highlights of, of I guess, signature programs, I guess, is, is our visual and performing arts program. If anybody listening right now enjoys visual or performing arts, you are going to have an unbelievable time at Thornton Academy. I mean, it's 34 different art courses. Again, our theater and our back, our, our uh, behind the scenes um, lighting, sound, et cetera, are, are fantastic. And again, we have a four year dance program uh, to combine along in there. And, and look, at, look at below the pics, all of the different offerings that are associated in our visual and performing arts. It's, it's a very dynamic, very active, fun um, signature program, no question about it. Athletics, I mean, a, a quick fact is we are in the top 1% of athletic success in the United States. What I mean by that is our athletic teams, varsity athletic teams, both boys and girls, invariably are in the state tournament, if not in the championship game year in and year out. So, uh, you know, 57 different athletic teams. One of the statistics that I think is very interesting is 70, you know, over 70%, 72% of our student body participate in sports. And again, they range from cross country, cheering, swimming, tennis, football, soccer, hockey, golf. I mean, it, it, it's pretty cool that, that such a large amount of our students are involved athletically. And what does that mean for you that are listening? That means if you want to participate, more than likely you will absolutely have the chance to do so. I think this, this slide is one of my favorites because it, it, it culminates what we are essentially trying to do and that is prepare you for your next level. Clearly we mention being who you are and becoming who you want to be. And you know, everybody's different. But look at, look at the college acceptance list, and you can see in that acceptance list that there are colleges with varied interests, varied levels of, of, of difficulty and whatnot, but, but just maritime academies, for example, liberal arts colleges, state colleges, high level universities, for example, like, like MIT, uh, it, just giving one example it's just again you, I, I hope you can sense in my voice how excited i am for young people to be able to access thornton academy and and here's the proof in the pudding so to speak i mean again you're becoming you, you're being who you are by being involved in all the opportunities and then becoming who you want to be with all of our encouragement support and opportunities that are available to you and with that, um, again, feel free to ask questions. Katie will lead us through this uh, as she does so well. But now I would like to introduce our Director of Residential Life, Ms. Catherine Parody. Good morning, everyone.
Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Kathy Parity, the Director of Residential Life. Um, I've, I've played many roles here at Thornton Academy. I'm a former English teacher, class dean, and now um, I'm the Director of Residential Life. I've been part of our boarding program since, since its inception. Um, and um, I have to say that uh, it has been um, a wonderful experience for me, both professionally and um, also for my family who um, live here in one of our dormitories. Um, and I'm a, also, I also play the role of a parent of um, Thornton Academy students. I have two daughters who have graduated from Thornton Academy and a son who is um, in grade eight at TAMS. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you today about Thornton Academy and um, I welcome any questions that you might have about our school um, or our, our boarding program. Um, so uh, just to start, Start off, I want to share a little bit of information about um, um, our boarding program. Um, we have um, 180 students, um, uh, which it, that number varies year to year, um, but um, we do have um, many countries represented so far. Um, we have had 52 uh, countries represented in our um, our boarding program. Um, we currently have 15 families that live um, on campus um, in, in five different dormitories. Um, dorm life um, has been um, wonderful for, for my family and I, and I hope a, a wonderful experience for the students that, um, that have come to TA. Um, I like to say that our um, dormitories is, is basically like a big house where everybody is, is part of a really big family. Um, all of our dormitories, um, I think, are very well equipped. They're fairly new buildings, um, and um, and they all um, come with dorm rooms that are equipped with everything that a student needs to feel comfortable and to find academic success. Um, um, but along with that, I also want to make sure that I mention that um, while we have so many kids that come and enjoy living in our dormitories. Um, we also have a really wonderful homestay program where um, students, uh, prospective students and families who um, would like to come to Maine um, and, and attend Thornton Academy, but perhaps want a little bit of a different experience. We have a, a, a wonderful homestay a program where we match those students up with local families and they uh, spend their time while they're at Thornton Academy living with a local family. Um, so it's nice that we have those options for both um, our middle school and our, our high school students that, uh, that come to Thornton Academy. Um, I, I wanted to just make sure uh, I shared a, a, a daily schedule with you so that you could see what, um, what is a typical day like at Thornton Academy. Um, we like to get up and at it pretty early in the morning. Um, at 8.15, we're asking our kids to, to leave the dorms and head over to the, um, the academic part of campus. Um, um, we serve three meals a day to our students during the weekdays and on the weekends we have a brunch dinner schedule. Um, our academic classes run from 8.30 a.m. to about 2.45 p.m. And then um, we have some time um, after school where kids are able to um, have some free time. Um, we also have a great Golden Edge program, um, which is our residential life college uh, preparatory um, uh, program. Um, kids also during their free time engage in athletics and then clubs. Um, every evening from 5.30 to 6, uh, we have a residential dinner. So all of the, uh, the students and families that live on campus have dinner together. Um, and then in the evening, we begin our, um, our nighttime routine, which is a room check every night to make sure um, that everybody is accounted for, uh, that rooms are, are fairly clean and kids are ready to begin study hours um, from 7.30 to 9.30. And then we have our lights out at 10.30 p.m. 
Um, on, on this slide, I wanted to just give you guys um, just some sample um, activities that we do. Um, every Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, we send out a weekend schedule and we know it's important for, um, for students experience at TA to be much more than just an academic experience. So um, I think our residential life staff does a really great job of putting together weekend activities um, every weekend um, where kids have the opportunity to enjoy the local sites, um, enjoy different parts of our campus. And um, so we've just um, here shared, I pulled some, um, some schedules from a, a typical Friday night um, or a Sunday afternoon. Um, we also have activities on Saturday, but these are just some samples of things that we like to do um, with kids. Um, as uh, Mr. Williams said earlier in the, um, in the presentation, we're very close to Portland. Um, and so we're able to go up and enjoy that city very often on the weekends. Um, we are also close to Boston. So um, that gives us a chance to um, go and visit during the day and then come back in the evening. Um, we have a train station right here in Saco, which is about five minutes from campus. So it's very easy to hop on a train, go spend the day in Boston and then come back in the evening. Um, but um, the Southern Maine area is one that's very beautiful. There are a lot of great outdoor um, activities that kids like to enjoy um, from, as you see on the screen, rafting to um, skiing in the winter. Um, we do a lot of hiking in the spring and fall. Um, I would say that we're a very active residential life community. And um, again, we're really proud of all the different activities and events that we're able to offer our students on the weekends. Um, we do have um, some major school vacations, and I know that for a lot of um, international families, there's always the concern about what happens with my kids um, during the vacation. So um, here we've broken down the um, four different um, vacations, the four major ones, um, and I'll just go over quickly with you what those typically look like. Um, for Thanksgiving, our dormitories are, are um, closed um, in a typical year. This year, because of the difficulty with travel, our dormitories remained open. Um, but in a typical year, they, um, they, they are closed. Um, and we do have a lot of students who will um, travel home um, or um, take place, uh, take part in our uh, vacation family program. And, and um, that program is one where we have students fill out a questionnaire, they sit down um, with a, through a, a quick interview process, and then they're paired with a local family. Um, and then they spend the long weekend with that family and have the opportunity to um, experience a traditional American Thanksgiving. And, and um, we have found that this program um, is really successful and it's a great way um, for our local students to meet, lo I mean, for our, our boarding students to meet local families and, and make great local connections. Um, Christmas vacation is our longest vacation, so our dormitories are closed. This is um, the vacation where most students will travel home um, um, during the school year. Um, during February and April vacation, um, our dormitories do remain open and um, we're, we we have our cafeteria open, um, our dorms are staffed, and we are able to offer um, a lot of different trips and activities for the kids that, that choose to stay on campus. Um, I also wanted to just take some time to talk about our residential life advisors. Um, what, one of the things that's really wonderful about our dorm staff is that um, all of the, the adults that um, are here on campus helping to supervise and take care of um, uh, our residential students are also adults that um, have um, roles teaching um, or a part of our administrative team at Thornton Academy. And um, along with all of those um, responsibilities, we also take on the responsibility of being residential life advisors. So that means that um, we're assigned a small group of students, maybe seven or eight students, and um, we sort of take on the role of a parent away from home um, for, for, the, for our international and, and boarding students. Um, we um, serve as support people. So if, if 
a student needs some help academically um, or it, something is happening socially, um, the residential life advisors are there to check in with kids and to make sure that um, everything is going well for them uh, during their time here at TA. Um, the advisors conduct weekly check-ins both in person and online. Uh, they have access to their grades, so they're checking in on them academically to make sure that things are going well for them. And they also communicate regularly with families to make sure that families are aware of, of what's happening um, with their students um, here at school and also just to share um, news of, of uh, school events and, and things like that. Um, I also wanted to, Mrs. Tabor couldn't be here with us this morning, but I also wanted to um, make sure that um, I spoke briefly about um, our nursing staff. Um, Thornton Academy is really lucky um, because we have three school nurses um, that are here to help take care of our students. Um, but I, I consider us really extra lucky because we have one nurse, Danielle Tabor, um, who is dedicated solely to taking care of our um, boarding students. Um, she is um, a very experienced nurse, um, both in the hospital setting and also in, um, in the school setting. Um, and what's wonderful about having Mrs. Tabor here as our residential life nurse is that she also lives here on campus um, in our dormitory, so is always here and ready to support students in, in whatever way that um, is needed. Um, she's great at making sure that um, daily medications are given. Um, if students need um, to see a doctor, um, she sets that up and escorts them to the appointments. Um, if a prescription needs to be filled, she is one that's taking care of that. And then the other thing that she um, is really wonderful at doing is, is communicating with parents to make sure that they are aware of um, the health happenings of, of their students while they're here at TA. And with that, I'm, I'm going to um, introduce Monse to you. Monse um, is currently a senior who has been with us for three years. Um, she comes to us from Mexico, and I'm gonna put her on the spot and just ask Monse um, to share a couple of um, the, her favorite things about being um, an international boarding student here at TA. Monse? Hi, thank you, Ms. Grady. Uh, well, as you mentioned, my name is Monse, and I've been here for three years. Um, I would say um, this school has given me a lot of opportunities. I don't know. Um, mostly, like, I've made a lot of friends, and I think that's, like, the best thing of this school. You pretty much make friends from around the world. And later on, you get to travel the world and meet your friends. And it's really cool because it's like having like a family somewhere else. And it's just a lot of fun. Like, for example, two years ago, I went to Europe and I went specifically to Hungary. That there I visited my friends and it was just like really cool because you get to know like the country as like, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. the arts department and for me it's one of the best things out of third and academy i've really enjoyed my art classes my art teachers are really nice um they are they will give you everything for you to like um be able to do art so like you don't have to worry about like art materials which most of the time are really pricey um they'll give you everything for you to do it um, you have the opportunity to take a lot of classes, uh, which you actually like and enjoy. I don't know, I was forced to take like a lot of hard classes back at home, and now I get the chance to choose my classes, which can be like nice, because you know like what's better for you and what you're actually looking for. Um, we've traveled a lot too. Um, I love going to Boston with my friends. I think it's like a really good idea like experience um you get to like kind of be free on what you like do here also um i don't know i don't think a lot of people think that when you're at, at a boarding school you're like restricted to do things but in this case you really aren't 
like you're free to do a lot of things like i don't know you just need to ask uh, if you want to go to Starbucks, you can. If you want to go to the supermarket, you can. If you not, if you want to go have dinner at the old port, you can. Like you are really free to do, like a lot of stuff. Also, I really like the weather here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but you, it's actually really interesting from someone that comes from like a really warm place to see every change of station. Like you are right here, and it's really hot then the the leaves start falling and it's like really pretty because i had never seen like red trees before so it's like really amazing then it snows for a long time for a really long time and it gets cold but then you also got spring and it's like really pretty um i don't know <laughs> um what else can i say uh well most like oh the dorm parents the dorm parents like are amazing people they'll help you in everything like literally everything if you have i don't know if you're feeling down one day you're feeling homesick you can just go talk to them and they'll just like be there for you they'll probably bake cookies for you um i don't know they'll just help you with everything if you're doing bad at school they will actually like be like you know you need to like step up your game and all that stuff but pretty much I think it's a really good experience coming here and you'll enjoy it uh, uh, I guarantee that like I was supposed to stay one year and I ended up staying here three for three years so <laughs> that pretty much says something about the school awesome thank you Monse um, we're gonna also let you hear from um, Esther who is um, a member of the class of 2022. And um, Esther comes to us from Spain. Uh, so Esther, I'll ask you to just uh, share uh, something similar. What are, what are the things that you love most about Thornton Academy and your experience here? Okay. Hi, I'm Esther and this is my second year today. I come from Spain. And I feel like what makes uh, TA dorms different from another Res Life programs is the um, the community that we created here. The dorm parents are like your parents; like they treated us like if we were their child, and like they care about us a lot. Um, and yeah, we're like between the students, we're like siblings we share everything like we live together and that's why this becomes like a, your family away from home and i think that's what i like the most about being here and also what i like obviously is the ski trips and <laughs> the trips to boston and yeah the activities that we do on weekends and the socials here in the dorms and you get to know people from other cultures and that's what's really cool about TA. And then I feel like talking about the academics, the best part is like we have a lot of variety. Like you can choose mostly whatever you want. And yeah, I'm also enrolled as just like Monsa said in the art program and it gives you a lot of opportunities to like expand your creativity and yeah it's really cool because you have almost everything you need to work and yeah that's really cool great thank you so much awesome yeah. All right, well, thank you everybody um, for those wonderful um, introductions. And I think, you know, the, just the passion and the, and the love and appreciation that, that, you know, we all have for Thornton Academy has really come through today. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap up by saying again, you heard from, from Esther and Monse, I think, you know, echoes of this sentiment here that, the, that you can really be who you are and be, then become who you want to be here. And that's, that's really what we believe. Um, it's more than just a tagline for us. It's really, you know, sort of what we want our students to, to do and be like. And so we're really proud of that. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen at this point and um, get into some of the questions um, that have come through. Um, all right, so we just had a question come through that I'm gonna that I'm gonna ask Monse and Esther, and that's about the dorm rooms. So you guys have been here 
for a couple years or three years. So tell me a little bit about your dorm rooms. Can you decorate it? How do you make it feel like home? Does one of you guys want to answer that? <laughs> Esther, you want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, you can decorate it as you want. Like, just you no know, making holes in the wall and stuff. But yeah, just, yeah, you could make it like your own little house. <laughs> And you can mostly do what you want in your room. Yeah. Okay, like you can, I, can, I have photos I mean, and yeah. Yeah, you pretty much like can do everything you want to your room as long as you don't damage it. Also, you need to consider that you pretty much have a roommate too. So kind of like consider your roommate as, as well. Uh, so yeah. Okay, awesome. And then Monse and Esther, we had a question come through too about sports. And I don't know, have either of you guys done a sport here at TA? Yeah, Esther, you have? Okay. So this, the, this, this person was asking if they've never tried a sport, um, can you try it? Or can you tell us a little bit about what your experience was like on the sports team? Yeah, uh, last year I was, I never tried soccer before and I, and I joined the team. And it was easy, like you just give it a try and see. And yeah, there's there's people that didn't that haven't tried it yet before and yeah, you just try it like it's easy, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'll just echo, I'll just add a little bit more to that. Um, and that is that, and I used to be, we, so Kathy and I both used to be coaches. So Kathy, you coach basketball and softball. Is that right? Yeah. And I coach tennis. Um, so we all, we have experience too. Um, and, and that, and what Esther was saying is right. And we also offer a whole variety of different teams. Um, and so, you know, we have for like for soccer, for example, and I don't, Esther, I don't know which team you were on, but there's three different teams for girls. And so, you know, like there's the top team, the varsity team is, is for generally more experienced players, but then there's two other levels of teams that you can be on. And, um, and, and I think that that's something that we're really proud of is that we do serve a really wide range of students with our athletic program. And so, you know, like a couple of years ago, we had the third best pole vaulter in the entire United States. Um, but we also have kids on the track team that like just want to do it to like stay in shape and, you know, like try something new. And so it's that balance of having really like top level athletics, but also having a place for someone that just wants to try something for the first time. So there are a couple teams like the golf team that have some limits um, in terms of like numbers of students that can be on the team, but otherwise, you know, it's pretty open to people. So. Um, but Katie, can I jump in on that? Yeah, please, Clint. I mean, if you, for example, in golf, we still encourage kids to participate and we will provide them opportunities to do that. Um, but, but when teams are restricted like golf, it doesn't necessarily mean that they, they aren't able to go and try to participate and play and learn the game, uh, utilizing our coaching staff to help with some of that stuff as well. So anyway, yep. just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Okay, um, great. So um, I'm going to throw out another question here um, that is uh, not related to sports. So going off in a, in a little bit of a different direction here. What in that, Kathy, I'm going to direct this really to you, I think. Um, so what if you have, what if there's a student that's struggling in a certain subject? Um, so there's a class that's really hard or, you know, they're just not doing so well. What are some of the supports that we have to offer for those students? Um, I think that that's a great question. We have we have a number of different supports, and I'll just say um, um, this first. One of the things that we um, try to do, and and I think that we're we're pretty successful at it, is um, before students um, start their classes, we have a um, the re class registration process, which. Um, 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 is, is one where we, it's a combination of a school counselor talking to a student um, about the classes that they've taken in the past, as well as 
um, some testing so that we know that we're placing students in the in the proper um, level of their class. So, for example, with math, we have a wide variety of different math classes. So our first goal is to make sure that a student is placed in the proper level. Um, and, and that's not to say that a student may um, be in a, the proper level, but still may not, you know, they still may struggle in the class. And when that happens, um, your teachers are going to find, uh, you're going to find that your teachers are going to be really supportive. Um, if you needed to stay after or set a time to meet with your teacher before class, um, they're very open to doing that. Um, I think one of the things that uh, we hear kids say a lot is that um, you know, they, they um, are surprised at how helpful the teachers are and how much the, the teachers want to see them succeed. Um, but out, outside of the teacher, there are also different ways that you can, um, you can have support. Um, our our uh, boarding students have the opportunity to be placed in um, um, a special study hall where um, they have um, a staff member there who can support and tutor um, if necessary. Um, and, and that's actually something that we have for all of our day students. Um, for our, our boarding students, we have this program just because um, there may be um, support that they need in terms of, of language. Um, so that support is there as well. Um, the other thing that I think that's really good to know is that um, the dorm staff, as I mentioned earlier, um, they are also uh, teachers and administrators um, in the school. So, um, you know, during um, our study hours, if a student needed support, um, it's totally okay for them to go to a dorm parent and say, I'm having problems with this, or can you help me? Um, and then finally, I'll, I, I can also add this. Um, if, if we found that a student really needed some support, um, we have in the past um, found great success by um, um, acquiring tutors for kids. So that, that is also a possibility. Okay, great, thanks. Um, that was a great answer. Okay, um, so I'm going to sort of address this next one myself, I think. Um, so somebody asked uh, about uh, day students. So most of the people on this call, I believe, are interested in our boarding and residential life program, but I know that there's a couple people that are um, local, like, you know, residents in the southern Maine area um, that are day students. Most of our students at Thornton Academy are day students. We have about on an average year, 200 boarding students and about 1,400 um, day students. So it's mostly day students. Um, we, in, if you do have specific questions about um, day, you know, we, we'd be happy to set up um, in a one-on-one -on -one call where we can we can talk to you um, about you know, answer all of your specific questions. And then I'll just throw out a, a quick plug to, we are having these virtual open houses monthly. And so this one is featuring our residential life program. The one that is in January will be featuring uh, our STEM teachers and students. So um, that will be a little bit more towards both boarding and day. But, um, but I'd be happy to get in touch with anyone specific, uh, for that wants more information about day students because we're not gonna really have the chance to talk very much about it today, but. Um, okay, great. So then we have a question, and Kathy, maybe you can talk about this because I know you used to be a basketball coach. That was a while ago, but maybe you still know something about the basketball program. Yeah. Um, so we had a student asking about basketball. So can you talk yeah. a little bit about what basketball is like? Yep. Um, so um, at Thornton Academy, we have um, three different sports seasons. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to, to try and participate in um, at least three different sports teams during the year. We have a fall season where there are specific sports played in the fall, a winter season, and then a spring season. During the winter is when we play basketball. Um, so that typically starts right before Thanksgiving break and then goes all the way through through until the end of, uh, usually like the end um, or middle of February. Um, for basketball, we have, um, uh, it's one of those sports where there are a lot of different levels. Um, so most, um, the, the, the program um, for both boys and girls is made up of three different teams. Um, the first team is, um, is the team that's a team for people who have um, 
to develop skills still or are just learning the game. Then you have a junior varsity level, which is more competitive. Um, and then you have the varsity level, which is um, typically students who are um, very skilled, very experienced players. And, um, and so students um, can um, try out and then coaches evaluate them and then place them on the different team. Um, the other great thing that, that we have um, is um, a, a local gyms where we have had um, students who, who maybe want to continue playing basketball outside of school. That's an opportunity for them as well. Um, right, right here on campus, we have an um, outdoor basketball court um, right next to our dorms, um, which is always busy with kids playing. So if, if you're a fan of basketball, uh, Maine basketball is fantastic. And um, there's a lot of opportunities for you to play here. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So we're still getting a lot of questions. So I'm really excited about that. This is really good. So I'm going to throw this out to Monse and Esther. Um, so this student is asking about, or this kid is asking here about um, interacting with the day students. So obviously you guys in the dorms have a really great relationship. You create, you know, friendships as you guys have talked about with kids from around the world. But can you talk to us a little bit about um, making friends with day students and interacting with, with uh, the day students as well? Yeah. Thanks. I think that if you, if you join, like, it's way easier if you join any sports team or any club. You really make friends there. I, when I was playing soccer last year, I did a really close friends. I made really close friends there, and yeah, that's. I feel like that's when where you pretty much um, make those friends. And obviously in class, I don't know in. In my case in French class, I did a, I made a lot of friends because we we talk and we interact with each other pretty much all the time in French, but <laughs> we talk and yeah. Awesome. I mean, you, okay, sounds you, good. Monte, you have something to add? Yes, you okay. can make like you can also make friends in the like in the classroom. Like it's. I don't know when we get assigned for group work you can just like you just meet them and you become friends I don't know it it has happened to me also in clubs like in clubs you you are able to meet like people and it's it's nice <laughs> I think um I just want to jump in I think that you know it's you, we spend, for those of us that live in the dormitory, we spend so much time around each other and, and it's really um, easy for us to develop close relationships when, with one another. But I think one thing that's important for um, everybody to remember is that um, the, the students that live in the dormitory are really a, just a very small pocket of our overall school population. So if you're a if you're a boarding student and you you are maybe you, you are in your French class, there may not be any other boarding students there. You may be the only one because you're you're um, you're intertwined with all of our, our day students. So there are a lot of um, opportunities for interaction with with the day students. Okay, great. Um, so the next question I'm going to throw out there is about roommates. So this question is specifically, when will I meet my roommate? Um, but maybe, Kathy, you could start by talking about the roommate process, and then I'd love to hear from Monse and Esther about um, what it's like having had roommates and having a roommate right now. So. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited that Bernardo is here because he is one of the students that's going to be joining us second semester. So I'm excited to meet you in person, Bernardo. And I'm going to, um, I, I sent an email, I think yesterday or two days ago. Um, and I am looking for you to reach out to me, um, so that I can share with you your Thornton Academy email, um, um, so that uh, we can begin that process. Um, but typically what we do with roommates is um, when students are here for the first time, we match them with their roommates and we match them based on a couple of things. One is um, we wanna make sure they're not rooming with a student who speaks the same 
um, language that they do because we want English to be the common language in the room. Um, and then we also match them based on um, their age or grade. Um, we don't want, you know, like a, a, a seventh grader rooming with a, a student who's in 11th grade. So we try to, we try to match by age if we can. Um, once you've been here for a year and um, um, you're, you're returning to us, um, students get to choose their roommates. And um, I think that's an, a nice uh, benefit for our returning students. They get to choose their room and, and, and their roommate as well. But um, for, so for you, Bernardo, um, send me an email and I'm gonna get you started on your roommate process. And maybe we can hear a little bit from Monse and Esther about like what it's been like having a roommate and. Um, it's been really nice. <laughs> I've had um, two roommates. Um, my first year here, I was assigned with like a Russian girl. She was really, she was really nice and also really crazy. So I think we kind of balanced each other. Um, but yeah, um, since last year I chose my roommate. Uh, we happened to like uh, go to the same family in Thanksgiving. Um, and we like became friends there. And we're like, oh, we really like living, each, uh, we really like living with each other. So we've been roommates now for two years. So it's been a really good experience. You also like kind of like become like sisters and it's just like really nice. That's awesome. All right, sweet Esther, do you want to talk a little bit about yeah. what it's been like for you? Mm -hmm. So last year I was in the triple room and I had two roommates and the second semester I like one changed and came another one and so in total like I had mm, three no four roommates yeah coming with this year too and I I love changing and I love like I don't know meeting new people and I love the fact that they are not from our country and even more the first year because you get to know like it makes you be more open with people and talking every every day with like with them in English and getting to know them and you really get really close to them and I really loved having a roommate because it, it it really feels like it's your sister and yeah you live together so it's nice. That's so awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, Monse, I'm going to throw this question to you. It says, what if I live in Mexico and I take math and Spanish? So I know both of you guys had this, but it says Mexico, so I'll throw it to you. What was it like um, sort of transitioning from, or I don't know, were your classes in English in Mexico before? Did you go to a bilingual school? Or like, what was it like to transition to just having classes in English? Oh, uh, yeah, I, um, had classes in Spanish. So it was like, it's a transition. You need to get used to it. For, for math class, I would say you kind of like find the cognates. I don't know. It's just like really similar. Like, I don't know. It's mostly numbers. So like you'll be, it's, it's going to be kind of easy for you unless you're in the statistics. But um, it, don't worry about it like I think you'll be able to like do it right because it's like you see the numbers and what's happening and like I don't know you like put them together and it's just like it's it's hard. it's not that hard it's just like you got used to it <laughs> somehow awesome okay great all right I'm gonna try to fly through some of the rest of these questions here so um we have a question about a debate team. Um, yes, we do have a debate team. It's um, run by Mr. Grasso, who is one of our English and history teachers. Um, it's usually a pretty small team, um, but yeah, it's an active team. They go to different competitions. It, the season for debate lasts from maybe October until February or something like that. Um, and it's a really neat program. So yes, that is an option um, if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, 
All right, uh, let, let's see, we have a question about cheering as well. So cheering, yes, if you've never done it, there are, we have two different levels of cheerleading teams. There's the varsity team, which is for um, experienced cheerleaders, and then the junior varsity team, which is for newer cheerleaders. So yes, you can be a part of that um, junior varsity team if you've never done it before, that is totally great. Um, then we have a question about football, um, and I, Bernardo, is this American football? I'm going to, I'll just talk about both. So American football, which um, I think is very popular in Mexico, which I was surprised about, but it seems to be. Um, so American football, we did have a, normally it's a fall sport. Um, we did have a very short, um, sort of strange season this year, and I know that uh, the MPA, who's the board that does all of the athletic Athletics for state of Maine um, they are talking about having a an American football season next summer so I feel like I am not sure um, to what the season will officially look like um, in turn if we do have a second season for American football this year normally it's a fall sport but um, our dorms are located very close to the um, football field so it's possible to just go out and play with friends and my guess is there will be some pickup games that, that get going on but I'm not sure about an organized season um, later this year. Kathy, Greg's a coach. I should have let you yeah. answer. Is and that I, right? Did, is that yeah. correct? What I, just said? I think that there's still a possibility be, because there wasn't a true football season this yeah. fall that there may be a possibility that it, another season will happen um, this spring. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay. Great. And um, all right. So then we have two questions that I've sort of been saving for the end. Um, and it looks like, Kathy, we also have a student, another student who's going to be with us next year, Vanessa Harari. So oh, um, right. she's wondering about her roommate. So we'll get in touch with her, right? Yeah. And, and for Vanessa, because I think she is um, for um, the 21-22 school year. So more information will come to you, Vanessa, um, later um, in early uh, 21, like probably um, April, um, we'll start sending information about roommates then. It's a good memory, Kathy. I'm impressed. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. All right. So we have someone asking about um, classes that are going to be, what classes are going to be like for next semester. Um, so uh, let me say what I, what we are planning on doing, knowing that, um, you know, this COVID pandemic could, could turn in any direction at any point. And so we're not, you know, I can't make any promises, but what we are planning on doing is having um, a hybrid model of classes. And so what that means is that you go into the classroom two days a week, either Mondays and Tuesdays or Thursdays and Fridays, and then the rest of the week you are at home. So everyone is online on Wednesdays doing um, asynchronous learning, which means sort of just like bigger projects and assignments to do. And then um, if your last name starts with A through K, uh, you go in on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then um, that on Thursdays and Fridays, you have live Zoom classes the whole school day. So you are like sort of in class, but like on Zoom for the for the rest of the time. That is what we're planning on doing for the rest of the school year. Um, but again, you know, if things get bad, um, you know, we may have to go fully remote. And if things magically get way better, then, you know, we do have the possibility of going back fully in person. But um, my guess is we would stick with the hybrid model for the rest of the year. Okay. Great. And all right. And then the, the last question that I wanted to just talk about is the admissions process. Um, and so for the admissions process, if, if anyone is interested in applying, um, there's an online application. Um, to apply, we require three letters of recommendation, two from teachers, one personal. We do an online um, interview on Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp, or something like that. Um, and we have transcripts, which are your official grades from the school that you are at currently. Um, we do still have space for fall 21-22. Um, and yeah, just feel free to send us an email to admissions at thorntonacademy.org um, if you'd like to learn more. And for anyone, um, if you're interested in either boarding or day admissions, um, or just would like to get more information about Thornton Academy, feel free to send us an email at admissions 
at thorntonacademy.org um, and we'd be happy to, um, to set up a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, I will be sending a follow-up email with the recording. Um, the recording will also live on our virtual open house page. So if you wanna watch it again or share it with your family or, or anyone, um, feel free to do that. And I just wanna give a big thank you um, to Miss Kathy Perry, Clint William, Svante, Esther. Um, this was a really great uh, virtual open house. And so we just thank all of you guys for sharing your, you know, opinions and thoughts about Thornton Academy. And um, we want to thank all of the, all of our um, attendees for coming today. Um, wherever you are around the world, we've got people from probably 10 different countries on the call today. So um, thank you for being with us. And um, we look forward to connecting with you soon. So, and Katie, thank, thanks to you as everyone. well. Thank okay, you, oh, thanks, Lynn. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll hopefully hear from everybody really soon. So have a great day thanks or everybody. evening, wherever Bye, you are. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you.